Hey, Blender Bob here. If you have been following me on either YouTube or X, you know very well how much I hated doing UVs in Blender. Until... Well, first, let me show you some of the cool stuff Maya has that Blender doesn't. The most important one is the Cut and Sew UV tool. It's absolutely amazing because you can just cut your edges any way you want. You just double click and it's going to select the entire edges until it reaches something where it cannot cut anymore. And you can see that once you have an island that is cut, isolated, it will change color. So it's really easy to see if you really isolated your island. Once everything has been cut, I can just unfold, orient, and do the layout. I have hotkeys to do this. Well, from there, it's the same thing as in Blender. You just select some edges and you stitch them together. Another cool thing about this tool is that if you cut again here, you will see that it will not go all the way. It will stop here because there was already a cut there. Another cool Maya feature is that it will highlight in red the UV islands that are flipped. So you can see here the writing is on the wrong side. So I could just select this island here and I can just flip it and everything will be back to the way it should be. But then again, if there's something that Maya really sucks at is straighten UVs. So I get this here, I try to make it straight and it just won't work. And even if I cut it in small pieces and try to, to straighten the small pieces and connect them again together, it's always a big mess. It doesn't work well at all. But in Blender, you go straighten and bam. And now let me introduce you to UV Flow, the add-on that made me ditch Maya for doing UVs. It is so powerful, you have no idea. It even made my hair grow back. And it's time for a closer look. In edit mode, you will see there's a new icon now called uh, Cut UV. Well, that's the UV Flow add-on. And it looks like it's doing the exact same thing as in Maya, but you can see the UVs are changing as I cut. And that's because it's unfolding as you cut. And you see, I just made an island here. This has been unfolded automatically. So I will do all the edges and you can see that not only they are unfolded, but they are also properly oriented. Also, just like in Maya, you can see that if I cut this edge here, it will not go all the way around the cube because there were already cuts that were made on each side. Use the Alt key if you want to merge edges together. But in some situation, just like in Maya, it's going to merge the entire edge and it will make some distortions because you have the corners stitched too, and we don't want that. When you are in the Cut tool, you also have all these options here that are available for which UV map you are working with. And you have tons of options for unwrapping, straighten, and packing. Speaking of which, let me pack the cube. I will obviously not go through all the options, but you can see how powerful this tool is. Now let's talk about Univi. It's an add-on that comes with the extension platform. It has a lot of tools in it, and I use this one here to stitch edges together. By the way, most of these tools are already in Blender. They are just rearranged in a nice UI interface. I believe that having to go through menus to do your functions is the least efficient way possible. Okay, so let's try it on something a little bit more complicated than a cube. I will do it on this part here. It's part of a car. You will see the entire car later. And I love that it unfolds everything in real time as you cut seams. Okay, so I'm speeding it up here, but you can see how fast it is to use UV Flow. It's a mind-blowing tool. I spoke a little bit about UniV before, but there's another one called UV Toolkit, and it also has a lot of tools. And if you take a good look at them, both of them, you can see that they are very much inspired by the UV Toolkit in Maya. There are tools that I use all the time, like straighten UVs. In this case, it's called Quotified in the UniV. Another one is Orient, where you select an edge and you click on Orient. It's going to orient the shell. But the thing is that it's going to do it on both of them because they share the same edge. So I need to click this edge here a little bit inside and then I can orient only this one. But now I would like to talk to you about my add-on called BBUVs. BB standing for Bugs Bunny, of course. And you can see that it's not exactly the same on the UV editor and on the viewport. And some options will change depending if you're on edit mode or object mode. So let's start with the viewport side. You have a select similar topology that will select all the objects that have the exact same topology. This is very useful if you have a lot of screws or rivets and things like this. You have another one called topology and scale. And this one will only select all the same object with the same topology and same scale. The next one is the grid helper. This is what I use. I don't like to use a checkerboard. I prefer to use my own texture. So I use this one here and you browse it and then you apply it and it will apply the texture on your model here. You can click on revert to go back to the original material or materials if you have more than one. You can also change the density of the map so you can make it two times, four times or six times higher. The rest of the options are available in both uh, the viewport and the UV editor. So let's take a look at them in the UV editor. 
The first one is called Set UI. I'm going to work with UDIM, so I need to see the entire UDIM grid. But for some reason, you don't see it in the options when you're in object mode. You need to be in edit mode. So now I can go here and I can change the tiling for 10 by 10. But I also don't like the way the edges are shown in Blender by default. There's kind of this outline here, like a black line in the center and white outline. It bothers me. I prefer to use just black line here. So that's cleaner. So the set UI will do this for you. You just need to click on it and bang, you get all your UDIMs and you get the black lines instead of the outline ones. Oh, by the way, in Blender for any windows, if you go in the corner here and you click shift and you drag, you can separate that window into a floating one and put it on a second monitor. Before we talk about packing, I want to talk about texel density first. So you can select an object, get the texel density, and then select one or multiple objects and set the same texel density. Okay, let's go back to packing. There's an option, keep texel density, it's off. So if I pack individually, you see I get the packing that you would usually get. Now let me undo this. If I turn on the keep texel density and I do it, then I will keep the same texel density that I had. There's also an option for rotation and this will rotate the islands as needed to give you the optimal packing. I usually never use this because I want to keep my islands straight so that if I have textures like writing to put on them, it's going to be flat. I don't want it with this weird 45 degree angle thing. Now I have both objects selected. If I go packed individually, they're going to be packed on top of each other while well, they look exactly the same because it's the same topology. If I use packed together, then both objects will be in the same UDIM. Now here's the most amazing thing about this add-on. All the options that you see here are available in object mode. I can do this in object mode. So I can set my texel density if I want to. I can pack my objects all in object mode. But I'm not done yet. You see this option here, selected? That means it's going to move all the UVs from the objects that are selected. So in this case, I have both objects selected. If I click on the little arrows here on all these buttons here, I will move from one UDIM distance so I can move them around to set up my, my UDIMs. If I click on highlighted, it's going to take the one that's highlighted in the outliner. So it's moving only this one here. We also have an option for collection. It's going to use the highlighted object to decide which collection is going to be used. So you see now I can move only the UVs from that collection. Again, it's going to take the one that's highlighted in the collection. So if I use control and select another object, then it's this entire collection that's going to move around. So if I do this, all the UVs from that collection are moving around. And let me repeat this again, we are in object mode. Okay, let's try with the entire car to see what we can do and how fast we can do it. We have 275 objects. There's no way I'm going to select 275 objects and put them into edit mode. That would be insane. I'm going to use two different texel density. One is going to be for the body and one is going to be for the engine because if I set all the same texel density as the body for the engine, these parts are going to get so small we won't get enough resolution to get all the details. This object is the biggest one, so I will use this as a reference for texel density. Then I will select all the other objects in the same collection and apply the texel density. I could actually use the same texel density for the tires. So set texel density and maybe the aileron in the back also because it's kind of part of the body. So I'll select all these objects and set the texel density. Oh, also the interior. Let me do the interior. You can see they were already packed all together. So I don't need to pack them. I can just do set texel density. But now I get into this problem because it was packed before I set the texel density and now the islands are just too close to each other. But it's easy to fix. All I need to do is to do a pack together again, but keep the texel density here. So I will just pack them. And now I get the correct space between the islands. These objects are done, so let me just move them out of the way. I got a bunch of objects here that are not centered on the UDIM for some reason. So all I will do is to pack individually and keep the texel density. Okay, so now everything is on top of each other. I need to fix that. So pressing Ctrl, I can highlight an object and just move it like this because I'm in highlighted mode. Do the same thing with this one. But there's another way I can move stuff around also. See, there's a move UV button. And if I click and drag, I can move the UVs here and place it wherever I want it. And again, I'm in object mode. I will press Ctrl and again move objects around so I can spread them on different UDIMs. This is the bottom of the car and I don't think we'll ever see it. So I don't think it needs to be that big. So what I'm going to do is just go back to edit mode and I'm going to scale it down and move it somewhere else. So let's uh, go back into object mode, select all the objects. It's this one here. So I will highlight it, pressing control. So like this and I will use my move and drag tool so I can place it wherever I need it to be. 
By the way, after the recording of this video, I've been able to find a way to match the move so that it matches the cursor now instead of being offset like you've seen in the previous shot. Now that all the body parts are done, I can move them up so that they get out of the way so I can continue working. For the engine, I will use the transmission here for the textile density. So I will get the textile density from this one and I will select all the other objects in there and I will set the same textual density. And you see, it goes pretty fast actually. And uh, the, the developers did a really, really good job for this. So I set the textual density and bam, it's immediate. So yeah, everything is now at the same scale. So at the end, I ended up with something like this. And you can see that the UDIMs are not one after the other all the way packed like that. You don't need to do this. It's not a requirement. The way I did it is all the different bodies are in one row of uh, UDIMs here on different tiles, a row of tiles. <laughs> okay, you know what I mean. The last thing I want to show you are these cleanup tools here. They are only available in edit mode. The first one is cross UDIM. So this one will select all the shells that are crossing the borders of the UDIM. So if you take a look at this one, we'll take a closer look, you can see eh, it's going a little bit too much on the left. So I just need to move it back inside. The second one will highlight the holes in your islands. Now you may think, what the hell is that? Why do I need this? It's pointless, right? Well, let me show you. I will just move this edge a little bit just to detach it from the rest. So if you look at it like this, well, you can barely tell that there's a hole there. But if you click on this, oh, -ho, suddenly it's highlighted. So you can see that there's a problem right here. So all you need to do is to select all these edges here and stitch them together. The next one will check for overlapping polygons. So you want to make sure you fix that. The fourth one will find UVs that have zero area that all collapse on top of each other. And when you click on it, it's going to unfold them. But now they don't have all the same textual density. So what you want to do is to go to UV here and do an average and it's going to make them all at the same textual density. And you pack them again. So we don't want to keep the textual density and pack them. Oops, it's actually too big. So uh, let me remove that and just pack them again. And then I'll just set the textual density again to make sure it matches the rest. So I will uh, select uh, this object here, get the textual density, select the other one and set the textual density. Select Flip will, of course, select all the islands that are flipped. Unlike Maya, Blender doesn't have a way to show you if uh, an island is flipped or not. And you can see it when I move it here, you can see the letter A here is backwards. So I can just flip it and now it's okay. I just need to place it back here so it doesn't overlap anything. Hey, I just realized something. This is Blender 4.2 and when you are in the vertex mode, well, you see the vertices, right? You see the vertex, the UVs. When you are in edge mode, you see the edges. But when you are in face mode, you see the faces and the vertices. You don't need to see the vertices. Why do you see them? It's really, really annoying because it makes too much of a mess. And big mouth that I am, I used to complain about this. And now in 4.5, when you're in face mode, you don't see the vertices anymore. You just see the faces. Thank you, devs. I'm not saying they changed it because of me, but I will pretend that it is. So Blender may not have all the tools that Maya has for unfolding UVs, but with these add-ons, you're 90% there. And there are many other add-ons also that exist for Blender for unfolding UVs. So now using UV Flow, Univ, and my own add-on, I'm actually faster and more efficient than I was in Maya. So that's like, I don't need Maya anymore for the rest of my life because I was only using Maya for unfolding UVs. So yeah, this is something very, very big for me. So as always, my add-on is free. The link is in the description. You just download the, uh, you go into release and you download the zip file, you drag and drop it into Blender. It's going to install it. UV Flow, well, you need to buy it, but it's really, really worth the money. And I'm not getting paid to do this, by the way. I bought the add-on because it's actually very, very, very good. And uh, Univ, well, it comes with the extension platform, so you just need to install it. All right, so I hope you enjoy it. Bye.